you. Let's talk about your friends. Yeah, you know, the people in your life that make you happy. The ones you love hanging out with more than you like hanging out with your family. Now, don't get me wrong, our families are great and all, but it's our friends. I talk to students all the time, and you know what they tell me? They tell me that the best people in their lives, apart from mom and dad, is their friends, and they love them. But you know, the best friendships are the friendships that feel like, you know, lifelines. The ones that we can go to when we have a problem. The ones that we can trust, you know? The ones that are there for us. The ones that just simply believe in us. But here's the deal. If our friends are so important to us, and we love them so much, then why don't we act like it? Hey, as you know, I grew up by the ocean with my friends, and the ocean was our playground, and we took full advantage of it. I mean, we had so much fun growing up, it was almost like an adventure every day. And I could tell you stories that would make you laugh. I could probably also tell you stories that will make you absolutely be in shock of the things that we did. Now, there's some other stories I would love to tell you, but I can't, because to this day, I am so sworn to secrecy but having friends and in our lives is so exciting I mean my friends and I we laughed together we had so much fun together I mean we even got in trouble together we got out of trouble together and it was great but there are those days when my friends and I we did not get along I mean we argued I mean we had huge disagreements and there were some days yeah we even had a good old-fashioned fist fight true story Hey, having friends is absolutely the best. Having best friends is even better. And you know, the cool thing about friends and having people like that in our lives, it teaches us so much. For example, our friends, they teach us how to be understanding. Hanging out with our friends teaches us how to be social. Hanging out with our friends even teaches us how to be loyal. That's an important character trait. Having friends also teaches us how to be forgiving, you know? And having great friends in our lives yeah, even teaches us how to argue. But let's be honest. We all have those friends in our lives, and they seem to bring out the worst in us. You know, they get us to say and do things that we probably shouldn't say and do. And be honest, I have those friends in my life as well. Now, listen, I'm not here to judge your friends. That's not my job. But I want you to think really hard now about the friends you hang out with. I mean, do they bring out the best in you or do they bring out the worst in you? Now, listen, I'm not here to judge them, but I can promise you this. You show me your friends, I can show you your future because we become just like those whom we hang out with. Hey, sometimes we gotta ask ourselves the hard questions. And the questions are this, are the friend or the friends that I'm hanging out with, are they bringing out the best of me or are they bringing out the worst of me? I mean, are you a better person because of your friends or are you slowly becoming someone that you really don't like? You see, some of the best friends you'll ever have in your life are the ones who will you know, simply say, hey, stop being a jerk, or the ones who will challenging you when when you're being unreasonable or the ones that will confront you and say hey you're being unwise right now hey the decisions you're making right now are not that smart hey you're being rude right now hey you're being unreasonable right now I mean the friends that will just step into your life and be real and honest with you those are the type of friends that we need as a Christian you know follower of Jesus you need to have friends in your life that challenges you in your relationship with God but on the other hand you also need to be that friend to your friend who challenges them also in their relationship with God. It kind of works both ways. Okay, we say that we want great friends in our lives, but the question is, are you a great friend? You say you want someone in your life that you can trust, but can your friends actually trust you? You say you want someone that you can depend on, but can your friends depend on you? Or is it just all about you? you you say that you want someone or a friend that brings out the best in you, but do you really bring out the best in your friends? So let me be more honest with you. If you are a Christian and you say you love and follow Jesus, then you need to be the best friend that your friends could ever wish for. Hey. 
I personally believe because we have Jesus, he just makes us better. Not that we're so great, but because he is so great in us. And as Christians who has friends, man, our friends need to see us taking our faith so seriously. They need to see us strong and confident and growing in our relationship with God. It is very, very important because one day, maybe you'll notice that your friends are starting to drift in the wrong direction. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about drifting. Growing up by the ocean, like I said, it was a lot of fun. And in the springtime, when the ice would break apart, my friends and I, wow, we loved jumping around on the broken ice pans. And there was this one day, now hold on a second, my mom was not a fan of this. She would say to me, Roger, I don't want you down there. You could fall in, you could drown. That was what she would say. But this one particular day, because I didn't listen, we were there and we were jumping around on this ice, having a really good time. But all of a sudden my friends, they started to push themselves a little too far from the shore. And I'm like, whoa, guys, that's gonna be a little too dangerous. But I didn't say anything, cause you know, I didn't wanna be that friend. I didn't wanna be the friend that ruins the fun for my friends, so I didn't say anything. But eventually, my friends got in trouble because they went at way too far on this ice. And they got caught in the current and the current started taking them further from the shore and they were in big trouble. Now I'm thinking, I need to go get help for my friends. And this was way before cell phones, so it wasn't like 911, I need your help. It was like, I need to go and get my mom. And that would mean I would have to admit that I was doing something she, she told me that I wasn't allowed to do. But I decided I was going to go because my friend's lives were in danger. So I ran to my house, but by the time I got there and told my mom, someone else from the community noticed the boys got in the boat and went and rescued them. And I still got in trouble. Wow. But guys, here's the deal. Sometimes, we just need to step up and say to our friends, hey, I believe what you're doing is wrong. I believe what you are about to you know, say or do or be with may not lead you in the right direction. Maybe sometimes what we need to say to our friends is, hey, I think you're drifting in the wrong direction. And because of your friend, I need to call you on it. Because I believe the choices that you're going to make today or tomorrow or this weekend it's gonna mess up your witness. It's gonna pull you away from your relationship with God. And I believe as a Christian friend who has Christian friends, we need to pay attention and we need to be honest with our friends, especially when they start to drift. Hey, here's another reason why your friends, they need to see you growing and maturing in your faith and confident in your relationship with God. Because there could just come a time when they are distracted. Let me tell you another story. There was a time I was driving uh, as a teenager, just kind of new no driving experience. And so we were driving to this park uh, to go for a swim and hang out with our friends. And so I'm driving and uh, I got distracted, okay? And matter of fact, I got so distracted that I totally forgot what I was doing, which was driving. Now, there's a saying, and when you're driving, you go, you go, like you steer to where you look, okay? Or you go where you look. And that was so true of me. I got so entranced at what I was looking at, the car started to go in that direction. Well, my friend who was in the passenger seat reaches over, grabs the wheel, and puts us back on the track or back on the road so we wouldn't crash. Man, that day could have been a disaster. And you're probably thinking, wow, it was never a dull moment with you, Roger. And come to think of it, you're right. But what about our friends? What happens when they start to get distracted with the things in their lives? When they start look, taking their eyes off following Jesus and they start looking at the things of this world, that's where you come in. As their friend, you need to come to your friend and say, hey, I just need to be real with you right now. Hey, I need to be honest with you right now because I believe what you're doing is taking your eyes off the direction of following Jesus. See, that's what a friend does. That's what a real friend does. But you had to build that in your relationship with your friends. And that's what a real friend does. A real friend says to their friend, hey, I see you drifting right now. Hey, I see you distracted right now. And I'm gonna be real with you. And I'm gonna call you out on it because I love you 
and I care for you. Are you that type of friend? Hey, let me give you one more reason why you need to be growing in your relationship with God, strong in your relationship with God, and yes, confident in your relationship with your with God. Because here's the deal. Yeah, you may see your friends drifting. Yeah, you may see them distracted. But what about when they're drowning? And you're like, drowning? Roger, what do you mean? Like physically drowning? No. Let me tell you a story. You see, before I became your youth pastor at Hillside Student Ministries, I was going through a rough time. I was really struggling. And people would say to me, hey, Roger, how you doing? And I would give the universal answer, I'm doing fine, thanks. How are you? But the reality was, I was a mess. I was stressed out. I had so much going on. And I had all this stuff that I felt like it was dragging me down. To be completely real with you, it was a season in my life where I even stop praying. But one of my friends, he reached out to me and he goes, hey Roger, I go to this church on Monday night. Why don't you come? And I knew that I needed to go, but I kept making excuses. No, I'm too busy. No, not tonight. I'm not feeling well. But eventually, because he kept asking me, I went. And let me tell you something. I'm so glad that I did because it was exactly what I needed. I needed to be in that environment where I could allow God to work on my life, where my friends could gather around me and pray for me. It felt like I could finally breathe for the first time in a long time. But my friend, what did he do? He reached into my life and he saw me in a position that I needed to be rescued. He needed and he was a lifeline to me. And we need to be that to our friends. Listen, our friends, when they go through rough times, they should, we should be there for them. We should be the ones who notice first. We should be the ones who notice, hey, they're distracted right now. Hey, they're drifting away. They're drifting right now. Hey, they're drowning right now with all the worries and their problems and their fears and their stress. And I need to reach in and be the ultimate friend to them. So my question for you, are you that type of friend? Are you the friend who's willing to step up and step into your friend? life when they need you the most because that's what you're called to do especially if you are a Christian and even more so if you say that person is your best friend okay let's just sit for a minute and let me just talk to you okay because I want to bring this all together for you today and I want to use this incredible story from Jesus life so in Luke chapter 10, Jesus is getting ready and he's going to this house for a meal. And it's two friends of his, two ladies, Mary and Martha. Now it says that Martha was so busy trying to make everything perfect for Jesus' visit that she just wouldn't, she just wouldn't sit still. And so here is Jesus in her house. Here is Jesus telling these incredible stories and telling them what's going on. But Martha got so distracted by what's going on in her life that she that everything had to be perfect. She had to get the meal ready. To house had to be clean. She was just kind of going all over the place. And then it says that she got frustrated with her sister for not helping. Or maybe she was frustrated with herself for prior to prioritizing the wrong things. But I love what happens in this story. Jesus comes alongside of her and says, hey, Martha, stop what you're doing. Hey, you need to relax. Hey, you're so distracted. You're drowning in all the details. Just come and sit and let's just talk. And see, this is what I really believe that Jesus is teaching us in this moment. Because let's be honest, Jesus calling her out like that, man, it had to be a little embarrassing, right? Where Jesus said, hey, Martha, stop. Sit for a minute. But she listens. But see, look at what Jesus was. Jesus was not rude. He just simply reached out and was a lifeline to her in that moment and said, hey, come on, relax for a minute. And this is what we need to be doing to our friends. We need to take a page from Jesus' life and say to our friends, hey, I see that you're so drifting right now. I see you're so distracted right now. I see that you're drowning with all life's problems. Can we just sit and talk for a minute? Because I care about you. And I want to have a conversation with you. Now listen, we said that in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, it gives us this command that we need to be imitators of God. And our model for that is Jesus. And we need to be Jesus to our friends. But maybe for a second, maybe it's not your friends who's distracted right now. 
Maybe it's not your friends who are drifting away right now. Maybe it's you who feels like you're drowning with the weight of the world on your shoulders. Maybe it's you right now who needs someone to come into your life. Maybe it's you right now who needs someone to come to you and say, hey, let me help you. And maybe you feel lost right now. Maybe you feel alone right now. Maybe you feel so overwhelmed with your anxiety right now that you're like, I don't know what to do. Can I just tell you something? Jesus is your friend. And Jesus is right there for you. And he's calling your name. And Jesus is saying to you, hey, I see that you're distracted. Hey, I see that you're drifting from me right now. I see that you're allowing the world to push you under right now. And Jesus is also reaching out to you. Would you reach back to him? Reach out to the God who loves you, who wants that relationship with you. And let me talk to you, students, and you are a Christian, and you love Jesus. I want to challenge you today. Would you step up and be the friend that God's calling you to be for your friends? Reach out to them. Be bold. Be confident. Say, hey, I see what you're doing. I see the choices that you're making, and I'm worried about you. But maybe you're thinking, but maybe my friends will push me away. No, be the friend that God's calling you to be. Be the lifeline for your friends. Be the one that they need. Listen, I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for my godly friends reaching out to me, getting in my face and telling me, stop being a jerk. Hey, you need to get right with God. You need to stop making those choices. Be the friend that you say that you want someone else to be for you. Be that for your friends. Let me encourage you one more time. Imitate God in everything you do. So the question is, what are you going to do? When you see your friends distracted, are you going to call them out on it in love? When you see your friends drifting away from their relationship with God, are you going to be the one that says, hey, can I just tell you something right now and be bold enough to speak into their lives? Or are you, can you also be the friend that when you see your friend overwhelmed by what's going on in their life, can you be the friend that just kind of puts an arm around them and say, hey, I'm here for you. I care about you and let me help you. So students, it's up to you. Be the friend God's calling you to be, or just be a person who hangs out with people. But my challenge for you is to step up and be the friend that God's calling you to be. Be the lifeline to your friends, because it's worth it. Hey guys, listen, it's been a great day at the ocean and I know I left you back there and I was kind of in your face. So I want to end today's talk being very encouraging to you because I believe in you. I know you can step up and be the friend that God's calling you to be to your friends. So here's my challenge for you this week. I want you... Uh, Nate, what just happened to the video? I don't know. It, it just stopped. Uh, listen, we, we can't use that. I mean, it. I don't, we can't reshoot it. I know, it's really dark outside. It's four in the morning. Yeah, it is getting kind of late. Um, okay, we need to figure this out. I mean, we got to have an ending for this video message. <sighs> well, what, what do you think we should do? I mean... Well, I'm kind of stuck. We got the camera here. Can we just shoot it right here now? We don't have microphones. Like, it's going to sound terrible. Uh, I know it's not going to sound the best, but at least we get the message out there. I mean, I still got a little bit left of this message. I, I, I need to get the content out to these people. Yeah, let's go for it. I mean, we need to. Okay, all right. Okay, so <clears throat> let me do this. All right. Hey, students, how you doing? Okay, seriously, we're not quite certain what happened to the video, but we promise this will never happen again. We are more professional than this, okay? I mean, we work a lot of long hours to get this content to you, so 
Uh, just bear with us just for a moment, but here's the deal. Back on the beach, man, I was giving it to you a little hard. I was really challenging you to step up. And listen, I'm only challenging you because I believe in you. I know that you can step up just a little bit more to be the ultimate friend to your friends. So I have a challenge for you. You ready for this? Okay. I'm gonna ask you to take a take out a pen and a piece of paper. I know, I said a piece of paper. And I want you to write down every person that you consider your friend. And what I want you to do then is go back to that list and I want you to pray for every one of your friends by name. Yeah, what I want you to say is, hey God, how can I be a better friend to and name that person, name them by their name. For example, if Nate was on my list, I would say, hey God, how can I be a better friend to Nate? You know, also pray and say, hey God, what am I missing in their life right now? How can I help them? What do they need from me? Because, you know, let's be real. Some of our friends, they're drifting and they need us. Some of our friends are really distracted and they need us to speak into their lives. Some of our friends, come on, they got so much stuff going on in their lives right now that they feel like they're drowning. Sure, they may be saying to you they're fine, they're okay, but you need to step in and be a friend and let them know that you're there for them. Listen, you can do this. So here's the deal. Step up, make the list of your friends, pray for them by name, and this week, go above and beyond. So that's my challenge for you. But for now, we're going to get back to this vid vid video software. <laughs> I don't edit the videos. He got it. He does it. But listen, we're going to figure this out, and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye for now. Okay. You know what? Um, let's just kind of go to that website, uh, Video Editing for Dummies. Yeah. That's the one I like. So okay. it may teach us something here right now and how to not. Great. <laughs>